Kia ora to you all. Inya iwi e hui hui nai numa e haere mai ka tingi hui. Ia mihi nui ki a koutou mō te haere nia mai te ko papa o te tēnā hui. Nō re rā, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Um, and greetings to you all and acknowledge your journey here to support the purpose of this meeting. Um, so I'll start with our karakia. Please to declare the meeting open. Kirunga, Kiraro, Kiroto, Kiwaho, Riri Riri Ho, Pai Nari. Okay, thank you. So uh, I'm Andy Whitehead, Chair of the community, uh, Taranaki Coastal Community Board. So if the rest can follow and declare your names, please. Please take it off mute as you stay. We'll start with Charlie. Please, the Deputy. Tēnā koutou, um, ko Charlie Mare Kurahau. Kia ora. Nita. Ko tēnā koutou katoa, uh, ko Bonita Bigham Ahau, no Manaya. Liz. Tēnā koutou katoa, ko uh, Liz Sinclair from Pihama. And at this stage, I would like to declare conflict of interest because I am a member of the Pihama Hall Committee. We're making an application for funding today. Aaron. Tēnā koutou katoa, ko Aaron Langton, to Greenwa. Um, I'm a councillor and I'll um, declare a conflict of interest with the Openeki Community Kindergarten. I used to be the licensee when they moved to that site, so thank you. Kia ora. Phil, are you, yep, Phil's there. Yep, Phil, you happy to say your name, please? Yeah, Phil Nixon. Um, sorry, I've just been having technology pro problems. Um, I can't join on the device I need to be on. Cool. Right. Who, whichever councillors we have there? No. Fran, if you just state that you are there, please. Poor friend Living's O. I'm the community advisor for South Taranaki District Council Coastal Ward. And Liam, please. Yeah, afternoon team. Liam Dare, Group Manager Environmental Services. Uh, I'm the, I guess, senior council officer for the meeting. Right, and some of our guests, we have Gordon there. Just push your mute button, Gordon, and state your name, please. Didn't, didn't hear that one, Gordon, so I'm not too sure. But it's Gordon... Chisnell. Chisnell. Okay, cool. Right, Mary, you're there, please. Cool. Mary Moore, Aho from Manaya. Kia ora. Kia ora. Uh, is. Uh, tēnā tātou, tēnā tēnā nui kā koutou ko Oz Signa. Tēnei, my name is Oz Signa, uh, living in Pongarehu and just here to support Nigel and our application for the Pongarehu Community Society. Kia ora tātou. Cool. And Nigel, I've made you wait till last, but you, you were here first, so <laughs> Nigel. All good. Hi, everybody. Uh, yep, Nigel Cliff uh, from Pongarehu, uh, here for the Pongarehu Community Society uh, funding application. Yep, and we have two of our support team here with Dahlia and Vanessa um, that are doing the recording and taking the minutes of this meeting. I think that's everybody. Is there anybody I've missed? No? <laughs> yeah, shout while well, you still on my um, mute. So. Okay, cool. Uh, well, we can um, move into open forum. Just trying to run two computers at once. So I've got my agenda on the big screen behind this computer. So, so uh, first, is there any apologies? I think we're all present. None have been recorded through the chair. Okay, cool. So no apologies. 
And then we can move into open forum. And so, Nigel, I'll start with you. I had you wait, I made you speak last, but uh, you can open our open forum, please. Okay. Um, yep. So, it's uh, an application for some um, funding for, for maintenance of the pool in Pongarehu. Um, I've only just come on. There's been a change of committee members. So, I've come on secretary this year. Uh, so the application was a little bit last minute. Um, Urs has pointed out that there may have been, uh, in the estimation of previous year's costs, uh, some expected profit. Um, going forward with uh, a change in people who are, who are offering their services to us this year, uh, the costs the costs are going to be not in a in a profit space. So, yep, just here to um, apply for some funding for. Uh, some pump rewinding services and chemical, base chemical use for the pool for the year, for the season. Okay, yep. So, yes, yeah, so I see on there, there is a cost of seven and a bit thousand dollars, um, and you are applying for $2,500. To really for, well, to $2,525.17. Yeah. That's what we have here. Cool. Right. So, is there any questions from anybody towards that application? Andy, if I may, can I um, have a quick quarter as well on that? Is that okay? Yes, that's fine. Yep. Awesome, thank you. Um, you'll recall that I came to a previous hui talking about the pump, and um, just to give you um, um, a bit of context, if I may, to add to Nigel, like Nigel, I'm new on the on the committee in, in Pongarehu. We also have um, Terry Simpson, a local dairy farmer, and um, Ray. Um, Ray's mum's just passed away, actually, Ray Hayward, um, yesterday, so our thoughts are with him, otherwise he would have been here as our chair. Um, but yeah, so our committee um, basically looks after the hall in Pongarehu on the main road that, that all of you will know as you drive past. Uh, but uh, the committee also manages and runs the um, uh, the pools uh, at Pongarehu. They were built in the 50s, as, as well as the domain. The domain is, is part of um, the assets that the Pongarehu Community Society has and is currently leased out to one of the farmers here. So that's basically our only income is um, the, the four-ish four thousand dollars that we get a year um from the lease of that the, the domain so yeah hence um we have um made this application we um we need a lot of money so to find a lot of money to maintain the hall uh, there's a lot of work to be done there and obviously the pool needs a lot of love it's all voluntary and um, all our mahi down there and I just want to emphasize just how what a cool community asset the pool is at the hall of course um here in Pumarehu, um in summer, the pool's packed with um, with Fano from uh, across Pongarehu, up Parihaka, down to Rahul Tu and to Waria, um, as, as a really um, awesome community facility that we we as a committee would like to maintain for, for our community. So yeah, just that context, if that's all right. Kia ora, everyone. Thank you. So just on that, well, directed at you and, and Nigel, um, obviously COVID has put a lot of restrictions on all of our pools. And so I know under the council pools, they are only open for lane swimming. Do you have anything, you know, like if, if we were to support this, what's the what's the protocol in place to, to keep those safety, same things applying for your pool as for the council pool? Do you want to tackle that one, Nigel? Should I give it a go? Uh, look, I've only got a little bit of information that Ray's brought back from his research from the Ministry of Health regarding that. Um, so I, I don't know a whole lot. Uh, if you know any more, is then yeah, apply it, apply it there, please. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Look, um, um, Ray has been in touch with uh, with Ministry of Health and MB as well, just to get some more clarification. Because in a way, many of us are in, in limbo um, in terms of community activities. Uh, my personal feeling is that um, we're going to move into this traffic light system a lot sooner uh, than than is was originally anticipated, which gives us opportunities to to run events and 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 run community facilities. It is our it is our shared 
vision and goal that we can open the pool on the 19th of December. That's what we're working towards and to do so safely and within um, ministry guidelines. And we believe we can do that. And our current advice that Ray brought back from his um, discussions with the ministry was that, that we may be able to do that. So fingers crossed, yeah. Thank you. Cool. Is there any further questions from any of the community board members? Yes. Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, Kira, guys, just um, how long um, is the pool normally open for? And do you have a good any, uh, um, indication on your uses of how many people uh, come along and attend it? Yeah, cool. So we usually open just before Christmas. That's the goal. So by um, early December, we empty the pool, uh, scrub it down, fill it up with the river water. Then again, from the Kapuai, it takes a couple of weeks for it to settle and to vacuum it. So um, our opening goal at this stage is the 19th of December, and in a good season, we get a um, we get a good run all the way to the end of March. So um, basically, we have three volunteers this year. Will be um, Terry. Nigel, although Nigel's got um, an operation on his hand and myself, so we're recruiting one more person. Then we take a week each on rotation of looking after the pool, which involves vacuuming it and, uh, at least once a week and applying the chemicals every night. So that's how we tend to roll. Uh, we usually sell about 70, 80 keys. So that's how we operate. Um, uh, each family buys a key for their family uh, and um, buys a subscription uh, to, to come to the pool. So... Again, might be a bit of tweaking this year with COVID and 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 levels and and traffic lights, but um, fingers crossed. Um, I'm I'm confident we can we can get this going for the community. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Well, no, that's awesome. If there's no further comments from the community board, I do, Andy, if I may. Yes, Anita, yes. Um, Tina Kodua, just in regards of safety at the pools, what's the what? Processes do you have in place to ensure that um, people are being looked up after all? Tamariki aren't attending by themselves and aren't putting themselves in danger. Kia ora, Benita. So um, it, it, the pool kind of, it, in a way, is a private pool, if you wish. So far, no buy subscriptions. There's a gate and a fence all around the pool, and you can only get in if you have the key to the padlock. So that's how the pool is operated. So it's it's, it's in a way operated on whānau come in together and are responsible for, for the tamariki. We don't have a lifeguard on hand or anything like that. And so that's how the pool has been running. And hence, it's not a council operated um, uh, pool, but it's, it is a private pool as such, providing a, a community service based on voluntary love. Um, so it's it's whānau need to come and look after the tamariki. That's, that's the regime we've had at the point. Yeah, it's 16, 16 or under needs to be cared for. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, any further questions? No. Well, next on my list is, of, if I go in order, I have the um, P. Harmer application. So, Liz, are you happy to speak on that one? Yes, I've been asked to speak on behalf of that. Um, the... Um, P. Harmer Hall has already been uh, allocated a defibrillator, which would serve the community. Um, and they want to um, install that on the outside wall so it's accessible 24 7 for people that require it. And to do that, they need a safety case very similar to the one that we saw at the lighthouse, where um, if somebody is in need of the defib, they phone a number. They get a code, they punch the button in the code, and then they can open the case. That means that it's available without being um, subject to sort of vandalism and things. Already this year, there has been one death quite close um, from a heart attack that might have benefited from the access to that proximity because it's quite a long distance into Opanaki to the closest defibrillator. So I believe it is a very, very good cause. So just to clarify, this is like got a code thing. So it's, you know, um, you, ring, you ring 111 to get the code. And... I can show you um, a picture of something that was similar. Um, yes, it's a, it's a plastic case with a code that you push in. I'll just find you, the... 
you get that code from ringing 111? Yes. Yep. So it's, I don't know if everyone can see. No, it's pretty blurry from my screen. Um, uh, I don't know where that thing is no. on it. It's a plastic case with a, oh, I'm sorry about that. No, that's cool. It, it, it has a keypad on it. Cool. So any questions from community board members? No, everybody's happy. Right, next on my list was the Manaya um, Community Services Committee applying for <clears throat> the Christmas Parade. So Gordon, we haven't got any sound from you. No, mute, so unclick your mute. I've still got your mute on yet. Now it's off. Turn some volume up, Gordon. Shall I go ahead? Yeah, if we let me, because we, Gordon, we, sorry, we just not, even when you're not on mute, we're not able to hear what you're saying. Not too sure why. Maybe, yeah, uh, we still can't hear you, sorry. So um, I, I believe Gordon um, sent in an application for funding to cover um, insurance liability um, and road closures, is that correct? Yeah, so we've got road closures, public liability, advertising, bans, ice blocks, lollies, prizes, and Santa suit, a total of $1,700. So there have been some changes because of the COVID regulations. Yeah, and sorry, just Mary, sorry, he, the amount requested from us, so that was the total cost, the amount requested from us was $800. So just clarify that, sir. Thank you. Um, so there have been some changes. Um, the road closure notice has gone ahead, um, though it won't be necessary. Um, the liability, I'm not sure if that's required for us or not. We're not having a parade in the usual sense. Um, it, it'll be the community, the people that live in the community that are there, and they'll be on their own property. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so what we're doing is we're having Santa come around and tour all of the streets in Manaya, and residents will stay on their lawns and um, dress up for Santa. Uh, they'll put on a display f of which there will be a competition. Yeah. Um, we ha Santa will be on his sleigh. He won't be, um, you know, coming down to shake hands or anything like that. He will have elves and golf carts coming by to hand out lollies and ice blocks. And Santa will just cruise through town as quick as he can. <laughs> <laughs> to get everybody in. Um, is there anything I didn't cover? We we um, want to have lollies and um, ice blocks for the kids as usual. I think that's a highlight of the parade, always is. Um, we would like to get costumes for the volunteer elves. Um, so you know, so it looks a little bit Christmassy or. So one, one thing with our discretionary fund is we, we don't cover the lollies, the ice blocks or the um, prizes, but right. I'm sure Santa suits and the advertising is a cost that you've lost that you won't get back. It's, I mean, I, yeah. I know from the Opanaki one, we had to make the decision to carry on or not carry on because of closing state highway um, 45. Yes. 
Yeah, so that cost is lost. Yep. Cool. So any questions from community board members? Sorry, through the chair. Um, Gordon, if you can just answer your door, there's somebody there to help with your mic. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, kia ora, Mr. Kia ora, Mary. Thank you, Andy. Um, considering the community board can't help with those fundamental parts of the parade that children always found joyous, and for many years I was one of those children. Uh, what uh, and so we've if we've got the potential to help with costumes, will those costumes be retained for future parades, even if they return to normal the normal parade format? Um, yes, um, we bought some sleigh bells, and those will stay with the community group for use in the next parade. Okay, and the next, and the next. So we don't normally fund retrospective um, as well, or retrospectively as well, but because the parade hasn't happened yet, I wouldn't consider that to be retrospective spending. So if those costs could be tallied up and incorporated into um, potentially the other way we can support with the costumes, et cetera, um, perhaps. So how's Santa getting around? Is he going to be on the, the fire engine as usual or something else or...? He'll be on his sleigh uh, on top of the truck okay. as, as usual, yeah. All right, so just looking at other ways we could potentially help, you know, it's a bit, bit more of, because um, Manai is quite a big town, even though people don't realise it. There are quite a few streets. So I know uh, we're small enough that we can do this and not many other places can. Yeah, but that's, my point is, is that, you know, if there are, if there are fuel costs or other costs that, that could be um, helped to be covered. I'm not sure what the golf, the golf cart's electric or just looking for other ways we can support if we can't do it through the food and prizes. Um, we like to have uh, Christmas lights at the rotunda, uh, a brighter display up there. I don't know if this is the right place to ask. Our, our Christmas lights are pretty dreary <laughs> right at this point in time. And that's something that would belong to council, I guess, unless uh, we decorated the rotunda and we'd be able to put it up and take it down. Yes, that's long beyond, been on our radar. Christmas lights for Manaya. <laughs> and or Panaki and... <laughs> All our coastal towns. Um, so on that Christmas lights, though, so some um, battery-powered or solar-powered ones could be added to the sleigh? Oh, that would be awesome. That would be terrific. Because this is the first time we're doing it in the evening, eh? Mm. Okay, yep. So, and then the, the, the way, like, this is obviously um, a step away from the normal. So, you know, I think I, think I definitely, um, you know, appreciate the effort that you guys are doing to find... A different way to to still celebrate the Christmas parade, even though it's not a parade. But yeah, you need to be commended for your for your initiative, at least. Thanks. So I think it's going to be awesome. <laughs> my, my question then, oh, sorry, my question then would be: uh, with all these changes, um. It's almost like we need an amended application to come to us as soon as possible so that we know exactly what it is we're working with. Yes, yeah, yes, ma'am, I can do that. Gordon and I can do that. Yeah, is, is that allowable? Do we just adjourn this application until we get that information or do we, might be some advice from our support team around this, do we have the capacity to adjourn the application subject or do we have to approve the application subject to more information or what what legally keeps us safe uh through the chair you can defer to um the next meeting um when you get the application which will be too far away for this mm. parade um, so could we approve subject to confirmation of costs yes through the chair okay thank you cool. can i also just ask about is there still a pipe band 
No. Um, there's a church choir that will be traveling in a, a caravan of sorts in their own cars and singing choirs here and there through town. But the pipe band, we can't. It's a COVID thing. They they can't really scatter out and we're not going to ask them. So um, take a long time I'm to asking walk. <laughs> because we've had a, a similar thing for Opanaki and there's a total of 100 people was the limit for a parade. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it sounds like a lot more than 100 people, Mary. No, I, I, can I just comment on that? The idea is that there will be roughly, um, well, my understanding is a maximum of 20 people actually going, and it's probably going to be less than that, a Santa, four elves, and um, maybe some people singing in a choir, which may be 10 or 15. Um, Separately. And they even. will go to, like, the people that live in Manaya will be staying at their house. So there will only be a maximum of um, 25 People They'll stay people. in their own bubbles, eh? Yeah. So the parade is coming to them. They're yeah. just staying at home. And it will go up every street past every house. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, that's my understanding, is that? Yep. Yep. Cool. Is that ever clarified? Everybody understands that? Yep. Cool. So no further questions. Just through you, Chair, um, just a comment from me. Good on you guys in Manaya for a bit of innovation there and making something happen in these times because I think it's really important that people are having some events with so many changes. So, um, yeah, commendation to you guys. Well done. Thank you. Gordon, have I missed anything? Gordon's muted still. Yeah, click click your mute button, Gordon. Can we hear you now? No, we still can't hear you, so thank you very much. No, thank you. Cheers. We'll we'll get numbers to you as soon as possible. Sounds wonderful. Thank you. You just have to let us um accept your application first, Mary. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, and so there's nobody there from Opanaki Community Kindergarten? No, so that's the only, there's no other speakers wishing to speak at Open Forum? No, well, that's um, us covered. So Mary and Gordon, you're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, but you're also welcome to um, sign out. So that's up to you. We will carry on with our meeting and we'll make a decision um, during the meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Right, so if we carry on back to the minutes of the previous meeting. Someone will tell me if I've stepped, missed anything out because I'm trying to run two computers. Do, do, do. So hopefully everybody's had a chance to read the minutes of the previous meeting. And then if somebody would like to move that they're true and accurate by stating their name in the seconder as well, please. Can I just make a query about, um, there is an item that says Waka Kotari is responsible for maintaining the gardens in Opanaki Township, and I don't believe that's so. I think it's outside on the state highway either side, but in the township, I believe it is council. So, uh, just before we go into discussion, is I just there... think that's inaccurate in the minutes. Okay, that would come under matters arising. Charlie Maddox, Maddox is happy to move these uh, minutes. Okay, cool. Bonita Bigham, happy to second. Okay, cool. Thank you. 
So then, Liz, that's a matter arising from you. Yep. That you believe the uh, through the chair. Through the chair, um, I understand what um Liz is talking about in the minutes where reference the gardens being upkept, um, and I have inadvertently put the ones in the town centre as opposed to the ones that are leading from the main state highway before the town centre. So I can make that amendment. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. So is there any other matters arising from those minutes? It's hard to remember exactly what was going on at the time because I think we'd just gone through a power cut and the Wi-Fi wasn't working and I was on a phone and yeah. So cool. Okay, so if there's no further discussion and noting that amendment um, about the the gardens on the road that will be corrected. Um, please state your name if you are happy that they are true and accurate. So I will say Andy, I'm happy. Charlie Maddock, are happy. Aaron, happy. Sinclair. Anita, are you happy? Sorry, what are we? Uh, are those in favour? Oh, well, not in favour, yes, I am. And so is that, let's see, everybody said there can be nobody against and nobody's abstaining. Oh, no, Phil, you, you've got voting rights, do you? Sorry. Yep, he's happy. So, cool. Right, now we can move on to the next thing on my list that I'm um, rolling through this, which is those applications for discretionary funding. So the first one that I had was the P. Harmer Hall. So, Chair, just confirming with you on page 12, you've got two recommendations. One, to receive the funding report, and then the next one is to move into your funding applications. Okay, cool. So um, I'd like to move that we receive. So Andy will move that we receive that report. Is there a second for that, please? We'll second it. We'll second it. Cool. Is there any discussion before we vote in favour? No. So all those in favour, please state their name. Aaron. Charlie. Liz. Juanita. And Andy, so there's nobody against and nobody abstaining. Cool. Right, so of those applications, we have the first one that I have up there is the um, P. Harmer Hall one for 15. 15, $1,581.25. Has anybody got any view as to whether we could or couldn't support. So we have three options. We can support the full amount, support a less amount, or decline the application. Now through you, Mr. Chair, I would like to move a motion that we support the full amount as applied for. Um, and my rationale is that this will be an essential community service. Um, as Liz has already outlined, potentially one life could have already been saved in the community recently with a facility like this made available to the community. I think it's a um, a small investment to make for a significant community asset. Cool, so that's Benita moving. Is there a seconder? I'll second that, Aaron. Aaron yeah. second that, cool. So are you, any further discussion from either Benita or Aaron? I think it's just a good, good community asset for that area. Right, so um, state your name if you are in favour of that. So Andy, yes. Charlie, yes. Aaron, Aaron yes. Juanita, yes. Liz has declared a conflict of interest, so I don't know whether that's in, yeah, so Liz is out of that one. So no, well, that one's um, successful. Yeah, I have to, yeah. Cool, thank you. Right, so the next one on my list is the Manaya Community Service Committee to, to do that Christmas parade. So they had applied for $800. Um, 
if we take off everything else, we are left with advertising of 200 and a Santa suit of $50. So um, being aware that there is also other Santa suits and a possibility of Christmas lights being added is there yeah, somebody would like to move an amount um, and as discussed earlier, that would be subject to hmm. those costs being made available to us before we give them the money. Um, I, al I also believe they may need the public liability. Okay. That gives us four, four, $500 that we know that they could take. And if they said three, three pixie suits, that would be another $150. So that would be $650 of cost that are there in front of us. So Mr. Chair, would it be easy, uh, will it be easier to just make a decision about how much we want to give them, um, subject to them coming back with costs to match as per our previous conversation during um, open forum? Uh, yep. And then they can come back with exactly what it is they would like to put on that list for, for Manaya. So we can either give them the full amount, a lesser amount, or decline the application. But my recommendation, and wearing my Manaya hat, would be that this would be, um, this is one of the few things as a community that Manaya still does as a Manaya community. Actually, it's the only thing, apart from Anzac Day, uh, which is also being held in front of people's houses in the last couple of years. So I think this would be great to support. Um, and I'd like to think that we can support them to the full amount subject to them getting that information to us. Which could include costumes, lights, the public liability, whatever it is, but let's just, I think, settle on an amount. Yep, yep. I think that's that would be the the right way to go give a amount of you're moving the full 800 is there a well Benita's moving the full 800 is there a seconder for the full 800 I'm happy yeah, to see yeah I'm happy to see this I, I think that it's a really good initiative what the Minot community is doing it's actually take your head off to them really we need to support whatever we can so it's it's great effort yeah it's a bit of normality uh, really isn't it yeah Yep, no, from my point of view, I think it's a great um, initiative to try something different. Yep, so all those that are in favour, please state their first name. And I'll start Charlie. with yes from Charlie, yes. Liz, yes. Liz, yes. Benita moved it, so she must be a yes. <laughs> so that's all. So there's nobody against or abstaining. So next on my list is the community, uh, Upanaki Community Kindergarten. Do they um, have a total, so it's a building renovation with a total price of $334,154.99. Um, they are applying to us for five, well they have, a shortfall of $19,154.99 and they're applying to us for 5000 So we can again give that amount, uh, uh, give a lesser amount or decline the application. Is there anybody got a thought? Yes, Liz? I have a question about that and that uh, what the Guidelines around funding is for small projects, and this is a mighty big project. And um, yeah, I just have a disquiet about them asking for such a large amount of money. They're not actually asking us for a large amount of money, but what you're saying is that it is part of a fairly major project. Yeah. So do you have a recommendation or is that just? Yeah, I just have a, a slight disquiet about the amount that they're, they're raising and 
Yeah. So you're, oh, yeah. you're welcome to offer, oh sorry, that's my phone going, so you're offering to turn off your phones before uh, the meeting. Oh, I don't even know, I can't even find it. Um, sorry, apologies. It's my house phone. Um, I'll just wait for that to quieten down because I don't even know where it is. Cool, it's gone. Hey, um, so yeah, so you have, you can approve the full amount, give a lesser amount or a decline, and move move one of those. And if there's somebody that will second it, then it goes through. If it doesn't, it we goes back to the. Just through you, Mr. Chair, it's not unprecedented, Liz. Um, Whale could have I applied for five thousand dollars a few years ago, and was granted that amount, being a. Uh, community asset, especially at a time when the hall had been closed. A lot of people were using the marae as a community asset, um, and so that was approved. So that is, there is precedent here for that kind of thing, uh, for that kind of amount, sorry, not that kind of thing, potentially. Um, I'm, I'm a bit unclear as to how kindergartens are normally funded. I'm not sure if they're ministry funded or um, you know, as an early childhood centre. So I'm a bit uncomfortable, if that's the case, Charlie's nodding. So I'm a bit uncomfortable stepping into that space for what I what looks to me like capital works um, for a organisation that is supposed to be ministry funded. And I might be wrong, so I'd be, I'd be grateful to um, get some more information, uh, perhaps from a kohanga perspective, is that how it, how it works with early childhood centres and stuff? I checked yesterday, yes. Benita, and it's a combination of uh, ministry funded, but they also charge fees, and it's not really a kindergarten anymore, so they have um, from age zero to age six, and the fees are graded uh, on the, that, that they charge people paid. It's like a daycare centre. Now. So is it pri is it a private business or no no but it, it doesn't operate purely as a kindergarten anymore it also enc encompasses daycare so they have a graduated scale of of fees for zero to two year olds it's forty five dollars a day for um, two year olds to four year olds there's another fee and then once between four and starting school, it's a diminished fee. That's purely okay. because they are funded on the 30, um, 20 hours free. Those four year olds are funded on 20 mm -hmm. hours free, which is government funding as well. So yeah. um, it, it started out as a kindergarten, which was just for three and four year olds, but they've since upgraded and, um, and, and incorporated two and unders. So um, from a kohanga perspective, ECE centres such as the Kindergarten Kohanga Reo, they do get a lot of funding through Ministry of Education. 75% of their funding comes from Ministry of Education. The rest is um, fees, fundraising, um, wins, subsidies and things like that. So they would get a substantial amount of money. So this is a huge project and I, without a doubt, I believe that it will be um, an asset to those whānau that are enrolled in the Kindergarten. Well, we're calling it's still called a kindergarten, um, but I don't see it as a community type place where anybody can just go to utilize that area because it is still a um, well private for members only yeah. place. I am aware yeah. that there you... is a substantial amount of um, council, like what do you call it, consent consenting fees so, which is all part of the work program yep it's part of the job of getting it done cool right so is there yeah, a mover I, for anything all right aaron you wanted to say something sir i, I just 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 answer i just we've just been through a, a funding round at full council with applications and we, um, as a group, we decided that anything to do with the Ministry of Health or the Ministry of Education that we wouldn't fund, just because it's outside funding. So I don't know if that's any indication for us. I know I said I was conflicted with, with this. It was just I don't know if that's a direction that we want to follow as well. Kilda, thank you, Aaron. 
And I don't think you were conflicted. You didn't speak to the, the kindergarten application yeah. to council process. Yeah. 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 The council process. Yeah. Um, Mr. Oh, actually, I've moved the last two. I'll let someone else come up with the. <laughs> you, you're, you're muted, Liz. <laughs> well, I I really would like to decline this, but I don't know whether everyone else is in agreement. So, so I move it. Yes, yeah. application is declined. Yeah. I'll second um, Liz's um, recommendation um, on yeah. the basis that I believe that it's not a community centre that everybody can just go and utilise once mm -hmm. they've made those upgrades. Um, yeah, based on that. Cool. Right, so on that, Liz has moved that it is declined. Charlie has second, so state your name if you're in favour of that, uh, that declining application, and I will say as Andy, yes. Uh, Bonita is in favour of declining. Cool. And so obviously Charlie and Liz are in favour. They've moved and seconded, and Aaron has um, yep. declared a conflict of interest, so that application has been declined. So the last one on our list is the Pangarehu Community Society. Um, so obviously they don't just look after the pool, they look after the community assets in Pangarehu. Um, but they are applying for the pool, which has a total project cost of $7,172.28, and they're applying to us for $2,500. $25.17 to cover the pool, motor, chemicals, the Taranaki Regional Council obviously come and check it, there's some electrical work, um, some expenses and they have their working fee, general maintenance and key cutting and plumbing repairs, power tools that are hired during the summer season. So is there anybody would like to move so again we can approve the full amount yeah. i'd like to approve that we approve the full amount for uh, this is an important part of the congaroo community a good me meeting point and with everything that's happening happening with covid it's pretty important that this facility stays open cool so is there i'm a happy scenario? to second that motion Aaron moved it charlie seconded it so any few any further conversation on that, Charlie? No. Anita's got a hand up to talk. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've been up there for ages and I forgot. Apologies. For that. But I, I agree. I agree with um with Aaron's rationale and that there are, you know, I, I can't even count on one hand the number of times we've had any applications from Pungarihu. So I think this is a great investment in that community. Cool. So all I, those I agree. Yep, so that's a, that's a yes from Benita, or there's an aye from Benita, Liz, and obviously from Aaron and Charlie who moved and seconded. I will also say yes to that. Um, so there's nobody against and nobody abstaining. So that brings us to the end of our funding applications. And yep. I am just reading there, supporting small projects within the individual wards that encourage groups and non-profit making or charitable aims to develop services, facilities, amenities, programs mm -hmm. within South Taranaki. Right, cool. So now we are moving on to our information. Scrolling down. Um, items for action will be your next report. Items for action, okay, yes, so the next one on there, I'm just scrolling through. Just through you, Chair, my agenda doesn't have any. No, I haven't got one no, on mine either. No, I haven't got them either. Um, through the Chair, there were no items for action for this round. Okay, cool. I thought, Benita, you discussed something about putting one on. It's, it's the next report. It's on the agenda. It's the next report. Ah, perfect. Cool. So I'm, my memory is sort of there, but not 100%. <laughs> cool. Right. So if there's no actions, we can move on to the, the first report is the 
Community Board Representative Appointment on the Policy and Strategy Committee. And I'm happy to speak to this, Mr Chair. Um, as previously indicated, uh, I've been in that position now for just over two years since we were all elected to the Community Board. Um, it's a strategic it's the strategic opportunity for the community board to have it stay and be involved in council discussion and deliberation before decisions go to full council for approval or, or whatever. Um, so it's really important that the community board be represented there. Uh, the other, as I understand it, I think it's all of them, the other three community board chairs sit there. Um, and I was, it was a privilege and honour for me to sit there on behalf of our community board, but my workload has become a bit crazy lately and it would be one less committee um, for me to to be thinking about so I will be I'm indicated that I wanted to step down from that committee and would like to recommend that um, our chair take up that mantle for the remainder of this term as our community board rep. From my point of view, I remember the discussion like with your expertise and knowledge. It was really cool having you there, Benita, and thank you very much. And I, I know you've given a massive input from our ward, so that is really, really appreciate being appreciated. Um, I, if there's either Liz or Charlie that really, really feel the need to, to be at these, I'm happy for them to go as our representative. But I, I am also. I'm ready to step up and and maybe learn a little bit more about the process and the things that need to happen by being there as our representative. I'd just like to mirror what Benita said. That's probably one of the most important committees to be on, on the council to attend, just to see what's going on. That's where the sort of nuts and bolts of stuff is decided and to have input on that's really important. So it's, it's yeah, it's a good it's a good place to go to see what goes on. So yeah, if yeah, it's important we have someone there. Yep. Thank you, Andy, for the little nudge, but I'm I'm way too busy. <laughs> <laughs> it's down to you and me, Liz. <laughs> no, not I'm too busy too. So <laughs> not that you're not ready. busy. I know you're I'm looking for somebody busy. behind me, but I'm running out of options. No, cool. I'd be happy to as long as um yeah, I'm aware when those are. I believe they're on a Monday every six weeks or something. Yes. Cool. When's the next one? Does anybody know? Next month, I think. Oh, it's, in my, it's in my diary. So one of the things that the staff will be able to do, Andy, is um, swap out you your email address for me in that mailing list. So they'll have all those to be able to. Yep. Darlena will be up to it. Through you, the chair, the next meeting is scheduled for Monday the 29th of November. My wife's birthday. Oh, my goodness. Perfect timing. Great today. Okay. I'll take it to the meeting for your birthday. <laughs> yeah, and then take her out of it. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Do we need a mover? You that... can't do one more, Benita. <laughs> May I suggest that you'd probably like just a shot while you're at the meeting and then you take it to dinner? Yeah. <laughs> no, cool. Somebody has to milk, though. Hey, no, back on subject. So, do we have to move? Somebody move that we are. Uh, Benita is standing down and I'm stepping up. Benita, would you be happy to say you moved it and I'll second it? Absolutely. I'm happy to yeah. happy to move that Andy become the Taranaki Coastal Community Board Rep to the Policy and Strategy Committee. Thank you. Second, Charlie. Yeah. And Liz, I from Aaron and Liz. I from Liz. Yeah. Am I allowed to abstain? <laughs> yeah, no. I'll say I'll say yes. The cool. conflict carried, yeah, conflict <laughs> of interest. Right, so now we're on to the information reports, which is the community development activity report. Was that the one you were talking about, Dahlia? Yes, sorry. Um, somebody like to move that, that, well, I'll move that report as received. Happy to something. second, Charlie. Charlie, cool, thank you. So any discussion on there? We've had the International Older Persons Day, a park. Um, 
cool. No discussion. I, we had uh, so with the chairs, mayor and chairs, we had some good discussion there. The, I believe the sculptor of the horse of the kiwi. I'm asking not there yeah, the in part yep yeah, the in Paatea, the the sculptor passed away recently, which was a little bit sad that he didn't get to see it fully erected, but it is still a process on on the go. No? So just oh. through you, Chair, um, yes, Fridjof did unfortunately pass away. The good part was he did get to learn before he went that it was going to be set in bronze and it is now in Lower Hut ready for that to happen. So that's really nice. Um, it was also good to see as a result of the meeting that you organised, Chair, in Okoyawa, um, that the fire hydrant is now being reinstalled in Joel Park, so that's really good to allow them to carry on do the good voluntary work that they do in our community. So that was um, a good thing to see um, the way that was working through community board. So well done. Yep. Yes, and I think that is one of the things that we really do benefit from going out to the smaller communities, like even with the Pangarehu swimming pool. You know, that came from a discussion that we had at. Uh, warrior, wasn't it? Punio Punio Pa, that's correct, yeah. So, um, on the playground, I think I mentioned it, that there is a bowling evening happening on the 20th, so this coming Saturday, to raise money for the Bowen Crescent playground. And I was invited to come along just to say good day, but I am actually going to be in Wellington. So, if anybody else is available to go and say hello. Um, they're more than welcome to call in there while they're playing bowls on Saturday. And so we're still working on that. Who is happening in um, Rahotu? And I haven't heard, is the hall finished? So that's on the 23rd of February. So, yeah. So, cool. Um, so, through the chair, Green. Uh, so I've spoken with the Hutu Hall and we're all booked and it was completed a couple of weeks ago. So they are all up and running with their after their refurbishment. Awesome. Right, so we will, um, all those in favour, please state their name that that report has received. Andy, yes. Aaron, yes. Liz, yes. Charlie, yes. Bonita, yes. Cool. And so there's nobody against and nobody abstaining. So that's cool. So the next information one up here as I scroll down to find it is the district library. If I haven't missed any, Dahlia. Can we just um, go, just step back, sorry, a little bit, just uh, with the fundings? Um, We've got some money left over from the fountains. What happens with that and what's the process? Does that go back into the pot or is $3,007.37? My understanding on that, and Fran will correct me or add information to it, is that we did agree to look at another fountain in Manaya. Yep, I just want to check how, how we come along with that. Yes, um, through the chair, Fran speaking. So I have con I've talked to um, the person involved with the funding, and there's a behind the scenes carryover. So there probably won't be a need to apply for a separate LDF unless we're needing some extra funding. I've have spoken with Comera Plumbing, and we're just waiting on a quote for a viable. Um, positional area in the row playground in Manaya. So we're just waiting to hear back on his quote. And I've already received a quote from Urban Effects who supply fountains. So I will give you a report once I've gathered all that information. Thank you. Thank you, friend. Right, so on to that district library plus report. Um, so I'll move that we receive that information report. Have a seconder, please. Only to second. 
Thank you. So any discussion on that library report? I believe the Ronald Hugh, Hugh Morrison Literally Awards was another great success. Yeah, through you, Chair, it was. And I'd just like to commend the library staff on their innovation, uh, Catherine and her team, to be able to bring that to us under COVID restrictions. And so that was really good. And again, it showcased a hell of a lot of uh, brilliant um, talent in our in our district and and part of it part of the competition goes regional as well. Um, so it was really good to see that and great to be able to have a have it go ahead. And also, you know, the innovation the staff's doing with putting um, bundles of books together for those who don't want to spend time browsing at these uncertain times they're able just to grab that and go they're doing some really good stuff and you'll see from the statistics that obviously things are a little bit different in the world at the moment um it's certainly going to change the amount of um books that are going out when the library was actually libraries were shut for a while so no um full commendation to that staff there again some i see our wi-fi is um you know 21 minutes in a month when we've only used 45,000 for the year 45,000 minutes for the year it must have been a very busy month in September so no so that's pretty much covered for the library plus so all those in favor that that report is received. Please say aye, or please state your name, sorry. Bonita. Charlie, aye. Aaron. Liz. And Andy is a yes. Okay, cool. So there's nobody against and no abstentions. So we can now move on to the Environmental Services Activity Report. And we have Liam here. Um, so I'll move that that report is received. If somebody can second that, please. I'll second that. Karen, thank you. Right, Liam. Yeah, afternoon, Chair. Um, happy to make just uh, probably uh, four or five sort of quick points uh, just on the report for October. Um, I guess in terms of the front end of the report, um, around building consents and resource consent activity. Um, it's it's really uh, new houses, um, subdivisions, uh, Hawara, Obanaki. There's, the, I guess, the four sort of key key things out of that. Uh, there's still a lot of activity as we head towards Christmas um, and new housing and that Hawara, Obanaki um, sort of growth nodes. Um, sort of that, that theme trend continues. Um, just on the regulatory side of things, I guess, uh, you know, we're coming off the back of a couple of months of uh, pretty sort of nasty statistics in the in the dog attack space. It's good to see dog attacks are down for October. Um, obviously, roaming roaming uh, dogs are still an issue. We're working through that. Um, we are sort of midway midway through a review. We're just looking at the uh, just the team dynamics at the moment, um, and then we'll broaden that out into a uh, a bigger process review, and that's going to um, involve elected members and community board members for input, just in terms of whether the settings are right in the bylaw and the dog control policy, uh, and just some of our sort of key practices. So that'll be probably coming your way sort of early 2022, um, but that's that's sort of where we're where we're tracking at the moment. Um, Probably on the environment and sustainability side of things, uh, the Bin Lectures uh, project's been um, um, quite a success. Um, there's been a few issues and there's been some media uh, comms around to some of the um, difficulties had with, with some bins that don't open when the latches are on, uh, but we're, we're communicating around that. Uh, and the, the Natural Environment Fund has just concluded and there's been some very worthy projects um, uh, that have received funding through that process. And uh, it, it follows a similar um, sort of framework as the the community initiatives fund uh, so it's transparent and uh, uh, there's, yeah there's a bit more uh, some transparency around how that fund is divvied up moving forward so it's been good to see the uptake in that space um, that's all i've got happy to uh, answer any questions 
So just um, on the consent, has there been a like a increase in cost with those consents over the due to COVID? I, mean, I know the cost of building has gone up substantially through you know the materials. Is there an increase with the consent process as well, or is that pretty much stayed static? Yeah, through the chair, um, the only change that's uh, happened in uh, the building consent and planning uh, consent space is that the hourly rates for planning uh, has gone up, so it's on a par with, with building consents. We had a, in the last couple of annual reports, we've had this um, sort of imbalance between, um, I guess, the hourly rate for a build, building control officer being charged out, which was different to a planner, so we've just brought them up so they're, they're on par. Um, that's about the only change uh, that I can recall. Everything's uh, based on actual costs. We don't have any fixed costs in that space. So um, that's really it. There's, we've got our uh, other central government levies we need to, chain, uh, to charge. There's been a, a slight percentage increase in those, but um, yeah, m most things haven't changed cost-wise. I know uh, materials and uh, those sorts of things have, have you know, gone exponentially upwards, uh, but uh, I guess our, our fees and charges have, have stayed pretty stable. Apart from that uh, imbalance, we've tried to address uh, in the between the planning and building building charging schedules. Cool. And yes, I commend you for your idea with the latches. It's so frustrating when you see bins tipped over and all the rubbish is blown out on a windy day or dogs have knocked them over and pulled everything out so hopefully that will reduce some of the unwanted rubbish on our streets but no further comments on the yes liz yep. i wanted to ask about abandoned vehicles it seems to be a really ongoing problem and um it, it doesn't seem to be going away does council have a policy to try and reduce that? Or, you know, or I don't know what you can do about it. Yeah, sorry, a TV's just trundling past me on a trolley. That was just a bit of a background noise there. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, Liz, I, I, through the chair, I, I don't have a, um, I don't have a, a, a solution for you there. It has been a problem. Um, <sighs> The only thing I can suggest is a is a community, you know, some uh, some some more sort of community communication campaign, but it's it's just a, a an unwanted problem we have to deal with. Cool. Any further discussion on that report? No. So all those in favour, please state the, that that report is received. Please state the name. So I'll start with Andy. Yes. Sharon. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> yep. So that's I got all that. Liz, Benita, Aaron, and Shirley. So, yep. Uh, cool. Um, so yeah. So there's nobody against them. Nobody abstaining. So we can move on to the facility usage report. So I'll move that that report is received by our community board. I get a second. One each second. Cool, thank you, Benita. Right, any discussion on that facility usage? Everything's ticking along. Um, yeah, no, I think the ref refuge or the recycling station at Opanaki is back up and running under level two. No, cool. I see, I see the town hall had some graffiti on it, which um, I did manage to paint over, but I see it hasn't been completely repainted yet. So uh, there's not been a lot of usage with the COVID restrictions. Okay, cool. So no further discussion on that. Those that are in favour, please Actually, state. Sorry, sorry and I, I did. Can I just make a suggestion yep. that um, we take the Manaya Town Hall off the usage report? Okay, yep. 
not a town hall. There is not much point at being there if it's closed, but is it as long as we don't it's not another reason to forget it. <laughs> I don't know what's anybody else's thoughts on that? Is there any viewpoint from council on that one being taken off? Well, the figures we've got there, you know, the last figures are for the 15, 16 years, so. Yeah. Been closed for six years now. Yeah. Right, so Benita's moving, we take that one off. It's depressing. Stephanie, I'll follow that up from um, our side. Thank you. Cool. I'll second it if it needed to be moved and seconded anyway. So, yep, cool. And all those in favour, please state your name. Andy, yes. Charles yes. nodding. Aaron, Liz yes. Sinclair, yeah. One, two, yes. Yes, cool. So that's everybody's in favour. So all those are against, or oh, there's nobody against and um, nobody abstained. So cool. So I'm pretty sure that is the end of our meeting. That's the end of my computer scrolling. <laughs> Went slightly more successful than last time, I believe. Yeah. Just through the chair, if you just want to confirm the time that you're closing the meeting. So we are closing the meeting at 3.42. Yep. Right. Closed. Excellent. Thank you all for your attendance. Thank you, everyone. I'll go milk my cows now. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, no. Actually, no. Can we just reopen the meeting and keep for another hour? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well <laughs> done. It wasn't such a bulls up this time. Let's <laughs> yeah. right. close time at 4.42, please. <laughs> so Good Debbie, Debbie looks on it on public. Uh, no. Excellent. Right. Kaki, thank Kaki you. Kia. All right.